Hi, in this video I want to cover a multitude of subjects. I want to get through them and just give a brief synopsis and idea and maybe how all these um, ideas sort of mix together and how they understand the reality in life that we're living in, the universe reality and things like that. So I want to cover this first topic of um, an example of using boredom in terms of the um, the chase game. Once you get what you want, um, you're on to looking for projecting some kind of experience, some anticipation into the future, which drives us some sort of um, anticipation that drives us into the future and where we're constantly looking forward to something that gives us hope and some kind of uh, guide to some kind uh, to uh, um, an understanding of where we're going and um, where what we're, what's expected and it's to build up some kind of um, some kind of gratification and where we're, the more satisfied the longer we chase something the more satisfying it is usually and the more you have to deprivate yourself um, and this idea I wanted to use is like boredom and how uh, we're constantly chasing is an, a, an analogy or chasing um, boredom. It's like you want the time to go by. How, in the end, do you want all this time to go by, the satisfaction? You want it to go by when you're bored, when you're not experiencing a good time. You want it to go by quickly, but then you're experiencing something good. Like boredom is a good example of a kind of deprivation of not having something to satisfy your needs at that time or satisfy your wants, your wants, your the satisfaction, some kind of gratification. And how in the end, was it really worth it? Was the satisfaction worth the hoping and the rushing of your time? Um, the boredom where you want time to go by or some kind of unsatisfying experience, some kind of painful, deprivated experience where you want it to go by only to get some kind of brief and fleeting and very uh, transient and um, ephemeral kind of um, satisfaction or a buildup of anticipation and get some sort of satisfaction you you're it's this idea that you're constantly looking forward and you want it you want to skip forward to the idea you want to skip a large portion of your existence just to get to where you are and you're just wasting in the meantime this idea of waste of time and energy and wasting this time that you have and hoping for some kind of anticipation so the more you anticipate the this idea of anticipation and um, greater satisfaction by a way of waiting and greater deprivation is the idea that is was it is it really worth it to get that satisfaction um, to go through I guess a greater pain and then how anticipation um, can create um, a greater deprivation in the experience that you have now the greater you anticipate something the more likely you're going to wish for it to happen and the more likely you're going to be more deprived in the experience leading up to that and how um, it's sort of in the idea of boredom and using that as an analogy um, sort of like being bored wishing for something to happen and how um, you wish time to go by and the anticipation builds up makes your time um, the anticipation of leading up to something or you know and it works in the opposite when you're not looking for something you want time to um, you know go slower if you're if you're, you're not looking forward to a dentist appointment or going to the doctors or something you don't look forward to or a surgery or something like that and then you want time to go by slowly but time is fleeting and it's gonna go by anyway and you're eventually gonna reach that point in time where you you actually have to get that thing done um, and the idea of anticipation it makes it so you want it to go by quickly and this this constant co this d cognitive dissonance this discrepancy between what we want and what we don't want anticipation uh, creating this wanting and this um, this, this, this the, the, the nature of t the uh, movement that we're existing in um, we're existing in chaotic movement no matter what we're it, not really chaotic movement it's obviously movement that was uh, predisposed predetermined based on an initial cause an initial spark that happened and then we're living in that initial in the, in the constant of interaction uh, and which we call as cause and effect at least on the human level or the uh, level of the person experiencing it um, we can understand that I, I do something and it causes something, but it's not a cause based on me. It's a cause based on all these other interactions based on initial cause and initial spark, uh, which um, describes the, the rest of the cause. We're living in a constant effect, a constant movement based on an initial cause that happened to th understand theoretically to begin with causing the universe or the reality we're living in and leading us to where we are now and into a pre predetermined uh, end. Um, so before I get off this boredom concept, um, it's uh, this idea of um, I want to flesh it out as good as possible. Um, this idea that we are um, the boredom thing and um, this boredom uh, and using it as an example, uh, we're constantly wishing for something in the end. We're willing to give up our time now. How um, you know we use this 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 anticipation and hope of something better or the anticipation of something that in the future you almost wish your time to go by this concept of wishing for something wishing for more fle uh, a, f a fleeting experience to lead up to your anticipation wasn't really worth it um, probably not because the satisfaction obviously the tension built up by the uh, trying to gratify this anticipation and satisfaction um, 
doesn't really mean anything. It doesn't add up in the end when the satisfaction is finally. It's not an equal and opposite reaction. It's just a satisfaction just because that's the way things happen to work out. It doesn't mean it's equal and opposite based on this equilibrium some kind of people perceive in reality. It's just a satisfaction you can understand. If you work hard and you don't get something in the end, you can physically and understand, emotionally feel. You have an emotional reaction that you know it wasn't really worth it in the end to get what you want, at least from your own projections and your uh, point of view and how you view the value of the things that you experience and the things that you get in the end and reaction to those experiences. Um, so this next concept is um, this idea of will um, and the um, idea that you can do something like, it's more of a semantics thing and I want to touch on it in another way of understanding consequence. This idea that we're um, understanding um, that you you can do something like when you say you can't go to the store we're obviously using excuses obviously it's always I want or I don't want that's the initial root of um, someone's experience and understanding if they have the motive to do it if they're going to do it if they don't want to do it and they use excuses like I have oh, I'm just tired or I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that they don't want to and that's the thing they want or they don't want uh, they want to put it off or they don't want to put it off they want to procrastinate or they want to uh, get it done with and uh, done and over with get it done and obviously you know you can see this in examples of people wanting and not wanting and it doesn't make sense and that's that's a basic concept of contradiction and hypocrisy when it comes to at least on the um the organism level experience things they want it for themselves but they don't want it for others and so on and so forth and they'll do it they'll do it fast for themselves but they want others to lay it off and they want others to do it fast but they don't have to do it and this concept can be applied to a social mechanism as well and um, understanding how we can um, apply these different standards to different things and how we can use these excuses and won't doesn't mean you can't like I won't I won't do something but that doesn't mean I can't do it and sort of like we uh, understand these consequences and how we can understand what can happen in the future like the consequence obviously you can kill someone um, but you can you have the right you have the ability uh, you can do it and especially if someone comes knocking on your door and you decide to pull a gun in their face and shoot their face off that doesn't mean that you, you can't do it you can't when you say you can't in a way of semantics and um, relationship to this idea this idea that um, you can do something but you won't when you say you can't you don't mean you can't you, you won't do it um, you won't do it because you understand the consequences and the consequences are something will happen you will obviously have to deal with some kind of consequences to some extent like the consequence you can expect like oh the cops will come to my door and arrest me um, so you can, people can understand these basic concepts that they, you won't, you can't, but you, you, it's not that you can't, it's that you won't. You understand the concept based on this deterministic universe and so on and so forth. We understand that something will, in a cause, happen and affect us in the end. And we'll have to deal with those consequences. You can, and what can happen after that can happen, the causes and effects of that can happen to you. And something will happen to you in effect of you having an effect on someone else and deciding you can and applying that to someone else. Um, so, like, another thing, and one more, so, uh, like, the consequence long-term and uh, uh, short-term and things like that, we can understand the, uh, the consequences of our actions, and those consequences are actions that um, beget, these actions that we have beget actions and consequences on us, so we can understand long-term and short-term that these have an effect, you can deal with guilt on an emotional level on a short-term and a long-term, you can recognize these consequences and these can have an effect on how you can choose to do something, your will and your ability to do something, your ability to do something doesn't mean you will do it. Um, or you, you you can do it. Obviously something's going to happen no matter what and the idea of determinism can only be applied to a past and obviously using that as an excuse only um, reinforces the idea that um, it was meant to happen to begin with and taking that as an excuse. So one more idea I want to get on is the initial spark, obviously. The initial spark, you know, it can only be applied, this idea. And I think this comes to an idea of people confusing this idea of some kind of spontaneous nature, random nature of reality, where, well, obviously, on a certain level, what causes the initial spark on the level, the, on the quantum level, on the uh, atomic level? What causes the initial spark, sort of like the boundaries that exist around us? Um, the initial spark, um, like, because we don't understand, maybe uh, because with this idea of infinite regression, uh, regression, uh, regression that something had to initially spark it spontaneously and the only initial spark that we're existing is this constant movement based on initial spark on the uh, uh, on the initial spark of the reality of the universe that we're living in and the initial spark is the beginning and we're just living in the moment there's no initial spark we're just living in the reaction of that initial spark and based on this constant movement and reaction to this initial spark so the initial spark this thing that the spontaneous nature of something magically existing and coming into being can only be applied to the beginning as far as we know and understanding we're just missing a few crucial details 
details and understanding what this idea of something initially sparking and causing this constant movement. We're living in movement and there's nothing initially sparking other than this movement based on an initial spark uh, and with the consequences leading up to this movement. There's no initial spark in every move we take, it's just reaction and speed of light and things like that in reaction, how we're moving. Just because I'm moving at five miles an hour, my hand's moving at five miles an hour, it's obviously moving at the speed of light to cause these particles bouncing back and forth against each other to see this movement, the movement inside the movement, like the atomic level causing these things um, to bounce back and forth and causing movement. It's moving at the speed of light, this instantaneous nature of my finger moving back and forth, sort of like the spontaneous is because the speed of light is causing the movement based on the initial cause causing the universe. Sort of like I can see my fingers, my finger itself based on the, the, the action of the finger, of the whole finger itself is moving five, uh, four miles an hour, but the very action of the instantaneous, of every step of this creating this movement, the frames per second, is caused by some, um, sort of like the pixels on a television screen or a computer screen, is caused by this initial reaction um, that's causing these bouncing, and it's, uh, the inside the movement is the movement of speed of light, but the finger, I can say from here to here, is moving like five miles an hour, four miles an hour, but sort of like frames per second, we can understand that the initial cause is some kind of speed of light, something beyond that we can necessarily see and understand. We can see it, but we don't necessarily apply it to an understanding of how things move around us. Um, so we can understand on the atomic level, something is moving at the speed of light, or something like that, we just can't see it. I can, I can see my finger moving five miles an hour, we just can't see the movement that causes this initial movement, and the thing, a movement inside the movement that's causing it to move, and so on and so forth. Um, and sort of how we can apply numbers and things like that to reality, the numbers of these associations that we experience, the consequences and things like that. Um, we're applying uh, numbers to this the experience and how all these things work together in one and so on and so forth. Um, so, yes, um, another thing I want to talk about, the numbers, like the number thing, like we're applying numbers. Um, we can only apply numbers afterwards, but we apply numbers like in a computer on the uh, idea of computer. Numbers cause all these programs to happen, but we can apply these numbers to the idea of neurology working, but we're applying these numbers um, based, on our own or based on our own perceptions of understanding how things work and applying these numbers based on associations and so on. And there's one more subject I want to go on, and it's circumstance. And um, it's this idea of circumstance, how we're all, uh, it's hard to understand circumstance because we know we're, we're just a product of our circumstance based on a deterministic universe and we're just at the will uh, and understanding that when a person's doing something you don't want or you, we're understanding that someone's doing something you could recognize you can be in their circumstance just as easy because they're just a product of their circumstance and it's more like empathy we can't really necessarily blame because it's, they're just a product of their circumstance just like you and how that can be applied to, just as much to you as them and it's sort of like this empathy where you can't get mad of them because you know you can be uh, just as much uh, at the begets of the universe of the being controlled by the universe as them and being in the circumstance so it's like the idea of that we're controlled by our circumstance so thank you I think I made my points good enough and I have to make sure this video ends before it gets too long so thank you and until next time goodbye